Hello everyone. In this video, we will continue to examine topic one, measurement and uncertainties, and in particular, uh, focusing on 1.1 measurements in physics and scientific notation and metric multipliers. So, uh, in the last video, we discussed the idea of there being physical quantities, which are measurable properties of the physical world. They are measured in units. Uh, those physical quantities uh, come in two kinds, uh, fundamental and derived, uh, and each quantity is accompanied by a symbol and a unit, and that unit has a symbol as well. Uh, one thing I didn't get to quite get to last time, uh, which I wanted to make sure to highlight, is that there is one weirdness about the use of the metric multipliers with the fundamental physical quantities. And that is, uh, for mass, the fundamental quantity is actually the kilogram. Um, in every other case, the lack of a metric multiplier tells you what the fundamental uh, unit is. Uh, that is not the case for mass for a number of historical reasons, and I apologize for that. So kilogram is actually the SI unit, and a factor of a thousand smaller than that, the gram, uh, is, um, uh, that's actually not the base unit. The base unit is this kilogram. Now, where does that matter? Why does that matter? Well, it's, it, comes out in the fact that, for example, uh, in the unit Newton, which is the unit for force, uh, a base unit Newton is made of other base units, including kilograms, meters, and seconds. So notice it's not grams, meters, and seconds, it's kilograms, meters, and seconds. Uh, and so the base unit of a Newton, uh, which is a derived unit, depends on the base unit of mass kilogram, not gram. Uh, kilogram is the only unit that does this. Uh, so the base unit of length is not the kilometer, it's just the meter. Um, and I'm sorry for that. If we could sort of uh, redo the whole, um, the whole system, we probably would eliminate that. Okay, so uh, a quick word about uh, scientific notation and orders of magnitude. Okay. So I'm going to assume you've seen scientific notation before, but it's important to recognize that absolutely 1,000% you should be comfortable with it. And in fact, it's not a bad habit to get into to simply write all of your answers in scientific notation, at least for practice and uh, for future things related to significant figures, which we will get to in due time. So big strong recommend, get used to writing... Uh, ordinary numbers that you would not write usually in scientific notation in scientific notation. Now, what is scientific notation? In scientific notation, you take whatever the number is, okay, however it's represented, uh, and you, uh, you represent it so that there is exactly one digit prior to the decimal point. So 375 becomes 3.75, and then you use a power of 10 to represent uh, that number. So 3.75 times 10 to the 2 um, means the same thing as 375. Um, but as it turns out, there'll be advantages to writing things like this. Um, why? Well, uh, if you have a number in the um, uh, mega or giga range, the millions or billions range, for example, uh, it can be a lot easier to represent very, very large numbers like this, uh, or for that matter, very, very small numbers. Um, moreover, it will be important for um, uh, the purposes of significant figures and in representing your quantities to the correct precision uh, that you be able to do so. Uh, and the, nor uh, the normal, ordinary way we would write a number is actually a little bit ambiguous. Uh, in terms of those significant figures, which we'll get to in a bit. So uh, 3.75 times 10 to the 2 is equivalent to 375, uh, and at the other end of the spectrum, 0 0.00721 is equivalent to 7.21 times 10 to the negative 3. 
okay? Um, one thing to note is that when you write it in scientific notation, it makes it much clearer why you might want to use metric multipliers. For example, if you had uh, to write uh, maybe not 375, uh, but let's say, um, uh, I don't know, let's just pick a number here, um, 12,000. Uh, 375 as a number. Uh, you might want to represent that in powers of 10, so you do so, uh, and that becomes 1.2375 times 10 to the fourth. Okay, uh, That is perhaps not as clear um, as using a metric multiplier. So let's say this was 10 to the fourth meters. You might instead say, uh, well, we're going to round it off and uh, use a metric multiplier to make it clearer uh, that this is equal to uh, 12.4 kilometers, or about equal to 12.4 kilometers. So I both rounded there uh, and used a metric multiplier to make it clearer. I think most people would say that if you were trying to communicate a distance, this is much clearer than this is. Um, so scientific notation can serve a number of purposes. Um, it's very clear and precise, um, and it also allows us to quickly use our metric multipliers uh, to convey information. One thing to note is that we'll also discuss, and you'll also be asked to uh, estimate the order of magnitude of something. Um, so you, you might be expected to give an answer, give a value to the nearest order of magnitude. What order of magnitude means is nearest power of 10. Okay, nearest power of 10. So uh, in a number like this, 375, the nearest power of 10 is 100, or 10 to the 2. Okay, this value is uh, closer to 10 to the 2 than it is to any other power of 10, okay? Um, now, what about this value? Well, you have to be a little bit careful, right? Our instinct is to read the nearest order of magnitude off the power of 10 given. Um, and while that is a totally reasonable thing to do, uh, as it turns out, right, 7 is closer to 10 than it is to 1. So this is actually 10 to the negative 2, to the nearest order of magnitude, okay? Um, things to note is that 70 is 7 times 10 to the 1, and 7 is 7 times 10 to the 0, right? This means 1. 10 to the 0 means 1. So this is the 0th order of magnitude, this is the first order of magnitude, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, you can estimate the number 7 to the nearest order of magnitude as 10. You can estimate the number 7 times 10 to the 1 to the nearest order of magnitude as 100, or 10 to the 2.